Okay, we know that all the treatments covered by Dr. Landau in her earlier presentation and the things mentioned in uh, Dr. Ruberg's presentation, they all have the goal of shutting down the amyloid factory. But what about the amyloid fibrils that are already in our heart, kidney, or other organs? How can we get rid of them? Next on the agenda is Michael Spector from Calum. Uh, Dr. Spector, I know I shouldn't say Dr. Spector. I don't know if he is a doctor or not, but uh, he, you know, he might play one on TV, right? But we're going to hear from Michael. He's the president and, and CEO of Calum Biosciences, and he's going to tell us about their research and current trials. So, Michael, you're on. Thank you very much, Muriel, for inviting uh, Calum Biosciences to this uh, webinar. Caitlin Biosciences is a biotechnology company seeking to progress its lead product, Cal 101, uh, in clinical development for the treatment of AL amyloidosis. Um, and this is a difficult time to progress clinical trials during the COVID-19 pandemic. So we are hoping to get patient input into the progression of clinical trials going forward. Um, Cal 101 uh, has completed one phase 1A, 1B clinical trial which provided some encouraging results, which I'll talk about shortly. In addition, Caleb Biosciences has initiated and is dosing patients in a phase two trial at the moment, seeking to uh, understand what the maximum tolerated dose could be for further phase three clinical trials. We're here presenting today for two purposes. First, we wanna provide patients with insight into new treatments that are in development. Uh, and second, um, we want to gain patient input into the development of clinical trials and potential challenges uh, of implementing clinical trials during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So um, I'm, I'm hoping to provide you an overview into Cal 101, our lead treatment, and how it, it, it uh, can advance patient care, uh, and also to gain your input today. Uh, our lead candidate, Cal 101, is a first-in-class anti-amyloid agent uh, for the treatment of AL amyloidosis. In the phase 1A, 1B study that I mentioned previously, what was important is that there was some uh, encouraging results showing functional improvement in three weeks um, measured by echocardiogram and also rapid improvement and reduction in biomarkers measured by nt pro -BMP. We have an ongoing phase two study today that's, that's going forward. Uh, four patients have been dosed, and an additional three patients will be dosed in the upcoming week. And this is exceptionally important considering that this is occurring during the COVID-19 pandemic. We're planning two additional clinical trials later this year, um, and we're seeking to study newly diagnosed patients uh, in combination with baseline underlying chemotherapy. The patient population being studied will be the Mayo stage at, uh, 3A and 3B population. Uh, we're seeking to study the most severe population so we can get an understanding whether CAL-101 can have an impact on survival. We'll also be seeking uh, to understand the impact on organ function, including cardiac, liver, and kidney. We'll be looking at uh, functional tests as well as patient quality of life. We're in a process right now of getting ongoing feedback from the physician community and the patient community to understand the possibility and the challenges of executing a clinical trial uh, later in 2020. You're probably aware that AL amyloidosis is a disease of the plasma cells where there's a production and an overproduction of plasma cells and light chains. Um, and so current treatment is focused on suppressing plasma cell production. So there's not the formation of light chains and misfolded uh, light chains that aggregate uh, in organs and cause organ dysfunction. I use the analogy of a boat that's filling up with water. As the boat is filling up with water, there's two ways to try and save the boat. One is to stop the water from coming in the boat, and the other is to remove the water uh, that's already in the boat. Current treatment would be analogous to the water coming in the boat. So if you could stop the water coming in the boat, you've done some uh, good, but it doesn't resolve the issue of this boat that's full of water. So CAL-101 is targeted 
at the amyloid that exists within the organ, analogous to the water that's in the boat. And, and we hope that Cal 101 binds to existing amyloid, stimulates an immune response to attack the amyloid and remove it to the, uh, uh, from the organ, which is very similar to what the boat analogy in which the chemotherapy is seeking to stop the water and Cal 101 is seeking to remove the water from the boat. The best treatment strategy or the best approach to saving the boat would be to do, to do both. And that's exactly what we're seeking to uh, achieve within amyloidosis. Chemotherapy and other plasma cell dyscrasia therapies are seeking to suppress the plasma cell. Uh, Cal 101 is going to seek to rapidly remove amyloid from existing uh, organs. There is an evolution in plasma cell dyscrasia therapy. There's chemotherapy today. Daratumumab is uh, in development. And we believe that underlying plasma cell dyscrasia therapy will continue to be a mainstay treatment for patients because keeping the tap turned off of misfolded proteins is important. But we don't believe that that alone can seek the rapid improvement in organ function that patients need. So we hope that CAL-101 becomes a mainstay treatment seeking to induce rapid amyloid removal and improve uh, organ function. We believe that physicians would treat with Cal 101 as long as organs continue to improve. And if organs uh, stabilize in their functioning, then a physician may choose to remove Cal 101. However, in more severe patients with significant organ uh, dysfunction, we believe that Cal 101 may become a lifelong treatment. So we're progressing to phase three clinical trials in the Mayo uh, stage 3A and 3B population targeted to start in the second half of uh, 2020, once we conclude our phase two dose selection study where we hope to dose at 1,000 milligrams per meter squared. Um, we expect that the dosing will be four initial weekly infusions to get as much drug on board to attack the amyloid as possible. And subsequently, we would expect dosing to be every two to four weeks going forward. The infusions last about two hours, and in the phase one trial, and currently in our phase two trial, we have not seen uh, any significant infusion site reactions. So with that, uh, Calum seeks and values your input, and we would ask that you review the questions uh, that I'm presenting now and provide responses back to the amyloid support groups. In general, we're seeking to understand the impact of uh, executing a clinical trial during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. We want to understand how your treatments have been impacted. You know, when you talk to other patients in support groups, uh, uh, are you sensing that your diagnosis, uh, and your care, and your treatment have been uh, different than what has been done in the past due to the COVID-19 impact? We want to understand your concerns about a dosing, uh, going to a hospital that requires four weekly infusions for a treatment that requires four weekly infusions, uh, followed by biweekly or monthly infusions thereafter. Uh, we want to understand the travel dynamic, um, the impact on your caregivers, uh, and how your caregivers will be part of the overall clinical trial process. And we want to ultimately understand what you need from us to execute a clinical trial so that you feel comfortable entering a clinical trial, especially uh, during uh, the COVID-19 uh, situation. So with that, I'd like to thank you for allowing me to present at this webinar today. Uh, we look forward to further patient engagement as we progress uh, Cal 101 through clinical development. And once again, thank you for allowing me to participate. Well, you're very welcome. Thanks to you, Michael. And this is a reminder that I realized that last uh, slide was on the screen too briefly for anyone probably to really read a lot of that. So uh, Paula will be sending out that page of questions uh, referenced by Michael, and you can email your responses to paula at amyloidosissupport.org. As a matter of fact, any questions you might have about today uh, that does not get answered, you can just email paula at amyloidosissupport.org. Paula will forward the responses to Michael and then she'll delete any names to maintain privacy because of course privacy is always very important. Okay, 
Uh, now we uh, we have, uh, uh, oh, I think Suzanne Lynch might have joined us. I thought I saw her name on here. So for those of you who don't know who Suzanne Lynch is, she, she'll also be on our, pod, on our panel. She's the uh, amyloidosis hematologist oncologist at Columbia University in New York. She hosts our meetings. She uh, comes to a lot of our meetings and um, she's, she's pretty awesome for sure. As is every doctor here, let's face it, right? Um, 